Well, 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 it's Saturday the 6th of March. This is episode 2109 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast, 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited by me at the JMO. Not knowing what to make a show about this week, I present to you a short review of every mobile phone I've ever owned. You can find an expanded version of this episode's script with images in the show notes. It is the year 2000 and a frigid cold day on Margate High Street. And with my mum in phones for you. I walk out with her paying the contract on an Ericsson T28 flip phone. I got 50 free text messages a month. The phone screen glowed with a pale blue light from the future. Its body was dark blue with a large black aerial at the top of the device. I can still mentally conjure the sensation of its spring loaded latch to release the flip. This phone reminds me of teenage me texting in the dark, anxiety, and emotions. I was in sixth form in 2002. 16 and 32 megabyte mp3 players were appearing and I got the Siemens SL42. It was the first ever mobile phone with an expandable memory and the first phone with an onboard mp3 player. Unfortunately, the proprietary headphones the phone required were out of my price range. So much to my chagrin, I spent the tail end of the Napster era with mp3s and an mp3 player, but with no means of listening to them. In 2004, I went to a phone shop in St. Lawrence in Thanet with my dad and brought myself the greatest phone of all time, the Sony Ericsson T105, El Clasico as it's known amongst my friends to this day. It was absolutely tiny. It would fit comfortably in the watch pocket of mid-2005 bootcut jeans, which was the style at the time. Square, white with rubberized orange piping along its edges, clear T9 buttons with orange text, and a bright future blue screen. Indestructible, a week of battery life, and it displayed four rows of text on screen. After I upgraded, my best mate used it for years, and later, his younger brother, El Clasico. In 2006, I got the Sony Ericsson W810i, a chunky black candy bar phone with orange detailing. My first phone with a camera. This was the first truly smartphone I owned. I'm incredibly grateful to this phone. It means that I have grainy postage stamp images of nights out and moments from my early 20s from nearly half a life ago. In the summer of 2007, I got the Sony Ericsson W880i, a thin Walkman branded phone made of metal, black with orange detailing. This is the phone I listened to burials on true on night buses all over London. Its two megapixel camera was a significant upgrade on the 810i. It also had a crappy 3G WAP browser, which was my entire experience of the internet at the time, as I was too poor to own a computer. This phone became bent from being in my pocket, and the screen would only work if I pressed it down hard on a flat surface, and I used it like this for months. In 2009, I got the second ever Android phone, the HTC Magic, white and shaped like a suppository. Android was an experimental platform and buggy as hell. It was slow and a hunk of garbage. The phone's battery life was terrible, but I loved it. In November of 2010, along came the HTC Desire Z, the perfect smartphone, a design yet to be surpassed. It had a full landscape QWERTY keyboard that would pop up and out on its painted Z hinge. Wonderful. I wrote at least 20,000 words of my first ever NaNoWriMo in my first month with that phone. Sadly, the Desire Z died after I dropped it less than an inch doing up my shoelaces whilst on holiday in Florence. RIP Desire Z. To replace the Desire Z, I got a Samsung S4 in white in 2013. A solid phone that pulled its weight and met all the demands I put upon it. Android was less crap by now, and the camera was fine. I don't really have much else to say. Then I got the HTC M9 delivered to work on launch day in 2015. The first phone that I thought was too big. Its 5 inch screen made even bigger by its bezels containing speaker grills. Honestly, this phone was okay. Disappointing maybe. Shiny. New, faster and better than the Samsung. But very soon after I got it, the phone's USB PCB burnt out and I woke up to the smell of burning. So I went back to my S4 for over a year. Like I said, the S4 met all the demands I put upon it. Sometime later, I bought a replacement microboard on eBay and had it fixed up by the guy on the high street. In October of 2018, I got the Pixel 3 just for the camera and I used it all around Asia and Australia and it took some lovely photos. I'm still using the Pixel 3 it's got great software and hardware integration, but it loses points for not having a keyboard. It's interesting that the two features I've focused on have been the ability to play music and take photos. With those things well and truly solved in 2021, the only thing I care about is having a physical keyboard. Just make phones smaller and twice as thick for goodness sake. Who cares about a fancy folding screen? Bring back buttons. I lament 
the state of so-called innovation in the squares of dark glass that we have today.